Fewer than 6% of American doctors are black, and in some specialties, it's even worse. Like dermatology, just 3% of dermatologists are black. The next generation of medical students is looking to change that. CNBC's Valerie Castro explains. Fourth-year medical student Victoria Humphrey is following her dream, studying to become a dermatologist at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine. I would love to focus on serving underserved populations and skin of color. A childhood illness is part of the reason she's pursuing dermatology. I actually had Kawasaki disease and I received a delayed diagnosis because the rash didn't look quite the same on my darker skin tone. Humphrey says that experience ignited her interest in the field, but she quickly noticed a lack of diversity during her studies. Medicine itself is not the most diverse field. And being a black woman in medicine, being underrepresented, I knew that it was an area that I can make an impact. Some patients would clap, they would smile, they would say, I can't believe it. I'm seeing a doctor who is black, is brown, has skin of color. Dr. Elena James is Humphrey's mentor. She's also a practicing dermatologist at the university's medical center. Patients are really, really looking for someone who is an expert in the field because there are a lot of differences the way skin disease presents. Dr. James says knowing those differences and being a doctor of color can dramatically impact a diagnosis and treatment plan. There have been studies to look at race concordant care, and some of these studies have shown that there is a benefit of a patient seeing a provider that is culturally race similar to them. There's so much that's packed into being a black person in America. We know that we are judged simply by the color of our skin, and the treatment we receive may be based on that as well. But Dr. James remains positive about the future of dermatology and students like Victoria, eager to not just make a difference, but be the face of change. There's a new energy that's here to put racism on the front line and coming up with strategic ways of overcoming it. I see Victoria standing up and making sure that her voice is heard. It's such a wonderful thing to be able to serve populations, one, that look like you, and two, that really need our help and our care the most. Dermatology may be one of the least diverse medical specialties, but overall diversity in medicine could be on the rise. Some medical schools are reporting an increase of more than 40 percent in African-American applicants, citing the pandemic and recent social justice movements as the motivating factors. Shep. All right, thanks. Dr. Janine Downey now, cosmetic dermatologist and author of the book, Beautiful Skin of Color. Dr. Downey, thank you. Why, why so few black doctors, especially dermatologists? Um, it's really troubling, Shep. I, the bottom line is that they are not training enough African-American dermatologists. And in my opinion, healthcare disparities are kind of a form of racism. And according to the American Medical Association, racism is a public health threat because you see a lack of education about skin of color, there's not enough training, and then because of that lack of exposure, there's no empathy, and it becomes filled with bias, racism, and judgment, and that's a problem. So only 3% of dermatologists in the United States are African-American, Jeff. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned the bias. How, how do you calculate the ripple effects of that obvious bias? Well, okay, so underrepresentation in medicine Basically, it's more significant now than it was in 1990 across all ranks in medical specialties, except for African-American OBGYNs that are female. But so what that means is that people of color are not influencing the practice of medicine and they're not contributing to innovation in the field. There's not enough medical research. There's not textbooks with skin of color with dermatologic disease in there. So people aren't being taught what different diseases look like on skin of color. And that leads to this wide void in medical knowledge. And that can be a huge problem in terms of diagnosis and proper treatment for patients with skin of color. Well, doctor, what's the solution to this? Can you think of one? Well, first of all, we need to mentor people as they're coming up right now. So my mother was my mentor. My mother's a pediatrician, so I was very, very lucky. But we need to mentor people as they're coming up. We need to enroll more people in medical school. I believe the statistic is 2% of Latina um, women in this country, excuse me, of all the physicians 
in this country, 2% are Latina, 2% are African-American, less than 1% are Native American, and 7.5% are Asian American. So that's in, in terms of women, statistics for women alone. So that's ridiculous. So we need to hire more in droves to come into medical school and to train in top-notch fields like dermatology, like orthopedic surgery, like general surgery, like plastic surgery. And then right now, Allergan is doing a DREAM initiative where driving racial equity in aesthetic medicine, where they're putting together textbooks and they're mentoring and they're training and they're doing education and advertising with Skin Better Science. And then Obagi is doing something called Skin Inclusion, where they're focusing on research and diversity and equity with people of skin of color. And so those are fantastic initiatives. And I'm part of both of those things. And I think it's really important that we look at the broad picture of diversity and equity inclusion so all people can be treated properly. Got to recognize it and admit there's a problem before you can solve it. Dr. Janine right. Downey, great to talk to you. Thanks so much.